Today's show is all about how to cut and sew together blocks using the Go Washington's Puzzle Die to make the Go Wacky Throw Quilt. and welcome to AccuQuilt Live. I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilt's creativity expert, and thank you for joining us today. Miss Pam, as you notice, is not here. She is on a well-deserved vacation, and I am filling in for her today, along with, of course, Miss Emily to keep me on track and keep us going. How are you? Good, I'm feeling wacky. We're on theme. You know, you match the quilt behind you. I match the quilt behind me. It's perfect. Isn't it nice? And Justin had us both in the video beforehand. It was just like, so put together. It's perfect. And yes. there's a jar of buttons sitting here next to me that is very tempting, she but I'm going to play with the jar of buttons. She wants to use it like maracas. I really do. You guys get all the things to jingle and I just, the, this we jar, it's, it's singing to me, man. <laughs> we do. Hello, Kirsten. Okay, let's see. Oh, Meridian, Idaho. I'm just Ooh. checking where everybody's from. Finleyville, Pennsylvania. Okay, I love that. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Finleyville, Memphis, Dubuque, Iowa. So glad to have them. Wagoner, with us. Oklahoma. Hello, Miss Cheryl. She's watching. She's in Omaha. Saskatoon, Canada. Wow. wow. Well, welcome everybody. And even though we've got the substitute teacher in the house, we are going to start with showcasing some great projects. We couldn't believe them when we were seeing them before. before. First up, we've got Karen R. Do you recognize the die, Emily? Okay, I was confusing it earlier, but it, you confirmed the Arkansas Traveler, and this colorway is just so pretty. Isn't it pretty? It's that that peachy, orangey. Yes. I just love it. Just, it's so pretty mm. and, and so simple, and I, I just love that look. Yes. Yeah. Yes, an amazing quilting, Karen. Absolutely. Next up, we had Sandra B. Okay, this is a stunner, isn't it? It really is. Her color choices were so unique. I love these, that kind of bright green with that really pretty kind of almost burgundy like eggplant color. This was actually, so Sandra actually sent us this photo after winning the North Carolina star dye oh. on our live show. Oh, how fun. So she's showing us. project. Exactly. That's the thing you do when you win. Then you make a project and you send in the picture so we can put it on here. Oh, that is exciting. We love to show off our projects. We love to show things off. Well, speaking of showing things off, before we jump into today's project, did you see that AccuQuilt has launched a new comfort grip handle for the Go Fabric Cutter? It is so cool. Okay, easy to install. We had a whole show about it yesterday. So let's just do a quick recap, yeah, right? Absolutely, let's do okay. it. Okay. So. I want to show you the two side by side because that's really how you see the differences. This is the new Comfort Grip handle. This is our original. Now you'll see this one's longer mm -hmm. and one of our experts, Anita Amador, was on yesterday. She's been trying out the cutter and she was saying how much more comfortable it was to have your hand just that little bit further away from the machine with yeah. the longer handle, but also that chubbier, that bigger grip. It really helps your, your hand. It makes it a little bit, uh, it's more ergonomically correct, I think, and it makes it a lot more comfortable, hence the name. Exactly. Now, you can go ahead and get a replacement comfort grip handle for your existing Go Cutter if you want to. Yes, you can upgrade. So if you've got this handle, you can get this handle. Now, it's important to note we've got two kinds of go cutters, right Emily? Yes, we have two kinds of handles. Um, and so when you are going to make sure that you know, you're know you ordering the right one, mm -hmm. there's the original handle, which has a screw in it. Yes. And then there's the smoother rolling action, which has a nut and a washer. So to tell if you've got either one, what mm -hmm. you're gonna do is just go ahead and use a flathead screwdriver at nine o'clock or three o'clock. Just pop it in and pop that um, little green A off yes. and you'll be able to determine which one you have. That's right. And the way I remember it is N is for new is for nut. So the newer one is the nut. Now the, the smoother rolling action came out in 2013. Mm -hmm. So 
new, so 2013 and past. So by far more people were getting this one. They are available to order on our website. They're also available from your local AccuQuilt retailer. So don't forget, get your comfort grip handle and Miss Pam, who is not here because she's on vacation, <laughs> left us a video on showing you exactly how to install your handle. It's on the handles page. So if you go to AccuQuilt.com and you type in comfort, you can pull it up and scroll down the page and there's the video that you can watch. So super easy, it'll show you just how to do it. Exactly. All right, now it's time for the picture of the day, right? Is that right? Yes. Okay, here's our picture of the day. And it is a book. It is a Dr. Seuss book called Wacky Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I love this. I did not remember Wacky Wednesday, but Joe, who has someone younger in his house, little Wren, it confirmed, yes, Wacky <laughs> Wednesday, good book. Okay, mm -hmm. so here's our question of the day because it is, of course, Wednesday. Absolutely. And we are making a wacky throw quilt. Do you prefer wacky and scrappy quilts or organized and color coordinated quilts? Mm -hmm. So this is the question of the day. What do you think, Emily? Are you wacky and scrappy or organized and yeah, you're you know, nodding. I, I wish I was organized, but you know, my, I myself, I thrive on chaos, unfortunately. She does, <laughs> she does. And sometimes I'll like, she'll say, here are the fabrics for my new quilt. And I'll say, okay, let's pull that back. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> Nelly, let's pull, let's pull a couple of those prints back. Um, remember, especially if you're doing something with big prints, big floral prints, and you're cutting two inch squares, remember you're only gonna see two inches of that. Right. Which can also work to your advantage. Did you know that? It really Did can. you know the saying, if your fabric is ugly, you haven't cut it small enough? I love that. <laughs> That's genius. So, you know, you just, so maybe it has like, I don't know, something cows and pigs or something on it, and you're not a farm kind of person. Sure. Just keep cutting it down, you'll get a very abstract design. That's a genius tip. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. All right. Well, let's get going then with the theme of the day, with what we're doing. We are going to take a look at one of my favorite dies. Now, this is a block on board or a bob die. It has all of the shapes to make a four inch finish Washington's puzzle block. And this has got to be one of my new favorite dies. And when you talk about scrappy, this is great for it. We're gonna talk about that coming up. Okay. So one pass through the cutter and you can cut your three color block. The shapes are screen printed on and those dog ears are specially designed so that they're gonna line up perfectly for you. And we'll show you how when we cut it. Of course, we've got that quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, that thread's bugging me. Included in all the pieces. So we're all ready to go. We're gonna cut one out. It's so cool. And before we get into um, cutting, um, we have had a couple questions when we were just going over that handle. Oh, yes, handle questions. That the, um, that the handle is uh, compatible with the Go Cutter. Some folks That is correct. I did not well. mention that. The new Comfort Grip handle is designed to work with the Go. It does not work with the Go Me or the Go Baby. Great question. Thank you for keeping us on track yes, with that. Do we you. have any other handle questions? Um, I am not seeing any other specific handle questions, but yes, they did want us to cover that just to make sure oh, that good. we clarified. Oh, good. Okay. So we're all clarified on that. <laughs> okay. So don't forget to check out AccuQuilt's website. We've got some great deals and discounts on there. So you want to take a look. Now today, since we're working with our Go Washington's Puzzle Die, we are gonna give away a Go Washington's Puzzle Die. Right, Miss Emily? Yes, I could not be more excited. Now, how you win is that you have to be sure you register for future events on the AccuQuilt event page. Because by registering, you'll not only get emails, event emails, so that you don't miss an event, but you get registered for a prize and then maybe Emily will be announcing your name as the winner, winning registered viewer at the end of the show. That's how it works. Okay, so the wacky wall hanging behind us is really a quick, easy weekend project. It is perfect for using up your solids. This has all solids. I have to admit, 
I didn't have a ton of solids at home when I went to make some, some of these blocks. Sure. And so I kind of worked some prints in, but they're subtle prints. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about using that. This pattern is a free download from AccuQuilt.com. So you'll want to go ahead, download the pattern so you can get yourself organized. Now, of course, to use, to make this quilt, we're going to need our Go Washington's Puzzle Die. We're going to need our 6x12 cutting mat. Now, we're also going to need a 6x6 cutting mat and our 8-inch mix and match cube. Ah, Love you say, cube. what are we doing with that cube? Just wait. You're going to need some fat eights of dark and light fabric and a couple of strip dies. Now, the four and a half inch strip die is going to be the, the wide border around the whole thing. That two and a half is what was used to make the binding. Cool. All right, let's take a little bit closer look at these shapes. These are directional shapes. Do I have this in the right place for you? Yeah. Oh, good. So these are directional shapes. Now, if you look at the directions for just making this block, it is going to tell you to place all of your fabric right side up. Mm -hmm. But when you go to look at the directions for cutting the blocks for this project, it's going to tell you to fan fold your fabric, which could be confusing. So let's take a step back and take a little bit closer look at the wacky quilt behind me. Mm -hmm. This is what makes us wacky here. So if you look here, we've got our, our shapes, our blocks, facing different directions. Can you see? Oh yeah, they're kind Going of doing a way, little dance this way, there. This way. And so we've got yellow ones here that are facing, this one's facing this way, these are facing this way. So they're going to be in a line going this way or this way. You're going to have ones that go both directions. If you're using solid fabric, don't worry about getting confused, right? If you're using print fabric, then you've got to pay attention. Sure, okay. So that is, that is our, that is, we have just conquered the most confusing part about making this entire project. It's the only hard part there is. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut one out. So I'll show you. I kind of laid mine out. I have my example the other way. But so here's a yellow, here's a green, which of course doesn't show up at all well. Here's a blue. So you can see we're going different directions, but whichever way you do it is going to be the right for what you're doing. So for this project, um, if you put all your fabric right side up, this is what it's going to look like. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, how cute is that green? It's perfect AccuQuilt green. It really is. It really is. So if you look really closely, there's a little bit of a print in the square. Well, that's safe because it's a square. It's not directional. These are our directional shapes over here. So let's get one cut out. Stop talking, Erica. Okay. So we've got our lengthwise grain. And here's our white. And... This is such a good scrap buster. So what is everybody saying? Scrappy, wacky scrappy? We oh, have man. got some fantastic, uh, some fantastic answers. So let's see, Miss um, Connie P says both. We have our dear go-getter Chris, who is on today. Thanks for watching today, Chris. Um, he is, loves wacky and scrappy for sure. Okay. He's like the king of scrappy. Um, we have Kathy D's Creative Chaos. <laughs> creative Love Chaos that. is fabulous. <laughs> Love that so I'm much. I'm a fan of Creative Chaos. Absolutely. And then we have Miss Linda L, who is also a wacky and scrappy type gal. We might have to do a poll and see if we have a winner because I'm seeing lots of wacky and lots scrappy. Lots of wacky and scrappy. <laughs> you know, here's the thing about scrap. Wack, we say wacky, scrappy. It's not easy. If you've always been very controlled mm -hmm. with your fabric selections, yes. crossing over to that scrappy is not easy. And when I first, when I made my first scrappy project, I was struggling with that because I'd sit and I would take what were to be scrappy pieces and at my sewing machine, I found myself like, okay, this looks good next to this one and this looks good next to this one. Right. That's really not what you should be doing. So I literally had a friend say, put them in a brown paper bag and just draw two and sew them together. Oh, that's a great idea. Kind yep. of takes so the If you're struggling it. with it. There you go. 
There's a thought. Okay, let's lay it out so we can get sewing. So this is basically a nine patch, right? It's just, it's a little wacky. So it's just on that little bit of a curve. So here's our, I'm gonna put that center square just a little bit at an angle. That's sure. our A. These are our C shapes. And I just like, this is just how I like to lay it out and think about it. Right. I like to make sure that my, but it's kind of like a pinwheel. They're all heading the same direction. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, look at that. See? And oh, Bonnie has a great question. Yes. Um, is, are there plans for a 12 inch Washington puzzle die? Which we, um, this is a great idea that we'd be happy to bring to our product development team. I do want to point out our sister company, Custom Shape Pros though. If oh, you're yeah. dying to, for a 12 inch Washington puzzle piece die, you know, we can always make a custom die for you. But it's so cute in the four inch. It is so cute with the four. And couldn't you just make a 12 inch block if you sewed what, oh gosh, don't make me do math, Erica. No, no, I mean, you could, you could make a 12 inch block. Yeah. You could put four together, which would be a 12 inch block. Right, yeah. But that wouldn't be a 12 inch Washington's puzzle block. I That's see where true. she's going with That's that. That's true. That's true. Okay. Ooh, any idea why it's called a Washington's puzzle? Absolutely none. <laughs> Maybe I'll do, I'll do some research on that and see do if some I can find some by that. the end of the show here. Yeah, we had that whole discussion when we when we launched this die. Was it Washington for Washington, the president? Oh, sure. Or was it Washington as in Washington, the state? Oh. So Pam and I both have lived in Washington, the state. Mm -hmm. So we decided it was named for Washington, the state. But that doesn't mean that it's right. <laughs> well, I think that's a great, a great um, explanation. Okay. So do we have any other questions? Um, let's see, oh, Robin's wondering, does, do the Bob dies have that indicated on the packaging? Which I believe if I'm remembering correct, yes, they do. They do. So there are some different ways that you can find cutting information on your Bob dies or any die really. Yeah. So on your packaging, there is actually a wealth of information, but you can also go to each dies product page at AccuQuilt.com. And if you look on that product page, there are going to be, especially for the newer ones, the newer releases in the last couple of years, yeah. there will be block assembly directions. We're working to get everything, but all the newer ones like Washington's Puzzle will have very detailed block assembly directions. Mm -hmm. Those are gonna have really detailed directions on how to prep your fabric, how to lay it on your die, how to cut it, how to lay out your block. Lots of pictures for those of us who do better with pictures than reading directions. <laughs> and it really makes sense. But again, we say this all the time, if it's a new die, make a test block. Don't cut all your fabric and then find out that it was a directional shape. Absolutely. And if you're looking for a Bob die specifically, you can shop specifically for Bob dies on our website, right, which is that, awesome. That is a great point. That is a great point. All right, so we've got our nine patch here and I'm gonna start by sewing these two pieces together. This is a super chain piecing project, okay? Yeah. So we're gonna do this to start with. And since you are chain piecing, Erica, we have a perfect question from Miss Elizabeth C. She's wondering, so she says, I have trouble with my quarter inch seams on small pieces when you're, yeah, when you're sewing kind of those smaller bits. Um, do you have any tips on keeping that true quarter inch seam allowance on I smaller do. pieces? I do, and I just, violated the first one because of course I sewed earlier on this and didn't have this problem and that is to use a leader oh, yeah. and an ender so let me step over to where I have some fabric yeah I get a couple scraps or squares or what have you right and so, I've heard that people make leaders and ender like quilts out of do. just leaders and ender people do so cool people do so let's just pretend we did just that so You've got, you got a scrap laying there. It's a scrap. Mm -hmm. Now, you could cut your scraps into like half square triangles and keep them handy. That would be organized, but for our purposes, we'll pretend. So what you're gonna do, the first thing is, you're gonna go ahead and get, let that sew, okay? Okay. Then what you can do is, 
fix this. So I'm going to fix it this way. Then you can start sewing your pieces. So doing it this way will keep it pulling straight through and keep you from having to keep them from going down in the ditch, if you will, going down in the hole. Yeah. Um, the hole that your needle goes up and down through. Most machines will come just with a throat, this is, this is um, like a throat plate, mm -hmm. and most of them will have an oval opening. So right. um, that you can do, a, could do a zigzag, you could do any stitch. Sure. But they do make ones that have just a little hole, and then it's harder for your fabric to get down inside. Ah, okay. A quarter inch foot helps, but here's another thing that helps. Luckily, they put all these great props a stiletto. So have you Ooh. sewn with one of these? I have not, but I've seen you okay. guys use them. If you're having trouble, and this is a great one. This is the one we sell on our website, and it's like sticky, kind of like an eraser on the one end. Nice. So if you're sewing, you can use this. If you notice that your ends, your corners tend to get, like, go, go astray, you can use this to help keep those pieces in order. Oh, look at that. And, you know, once you get going with something, you're usually pretty good. And when you get to the end of it, you're usually pretty good. But sometimes when you get to the end of it, especially with little pieces, you'll notice that you've got, see? Oh, how perfect is that? That can work really well to help you um, keep your seam allowances out of your seams and those kinds of things too. Then what you could do if you were working with your leaders and enders mm -hmm. is to go ahead and sew another, grab another half square triangle out of your set, out of your basket mm -hmm. or whatever it is that you're doing and sew that at the end and leave it on the machine so that it's already there for you to go the next time. That's smart, that's very smart. And that's how you kind of build those up. Nice, oh perfect. That, that actually would have probably helped me with my problem the other night I was sewing and of course, you know, all my threads got stuck and my needle was stuck and I couldn't crank it back so I had to, oh it was, a, it was an ordeal, but it's we got thing. there. <laughs> it's a, a thing, thing. <laughs> it happens. So normally with a four inch block, I'm going to tell you to press all of your seams open. Okay. But we want to make sure we get these great points right here and here. And I actually have been pressing them like I usually do a nine patch. So I'm going to press the top and bottom rows to the outside and the middle row to the inside. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Oh, is that going to make them nest all nice and perfectly? It's going to make them nest. I do love a good nest. I love that trick. That's so genius. So I'm going to lay it out so you can see what I'm what I'm all about. Ooh, and this is perfect, Erica. So we, you were kind of talking about, you know, how um, like the right right side, um, you know, to, to flip your fabric, either fan folded or right side up. Mm -hmm. um, Jackie M is wondering, with solid fabrics, i.e. Kona cotton, how can you tell which is the right side of the fabric or does it really matter? It doesn't really matter. There's the beauty of working with solids. Perfect. There's the beauty of working with solids. Now, what we've learned is when we're testing things, we sometimes need to be sure we're not working with solids, which we typically do. We need to be sure we use prints so that we're aware of these things while we're testing. Okay, that makes total yeah. sense. Yeah, otherwise you're making backward blocks. Right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, so we've got our first two pieces. Now we're ready to sew that third piece onto each row. So while I do that, perfect. Let's get let's get uh, wacky and scrappy versus yeah. organized. Let's get a wacky and scrappy. Oh, and we have a great question from Mary Kay, who's wondering what what is a bob die? Oh, what a fantastic question! Would you like to answer that? Sure, I'll take okay. it. So um, a bob die or B O B stands for block on board which means that you are going to have every single piece, every single shape that you need to cut out for a given uh, finished block on one die board. So we have, oh gosh, I don't even know how many we, Bob dies we have in total, we, but we have, you know, obviously we have the Washington puzzle, which starts all, you know, at four inches and they go all the way up to Tree of Life, which is, I believe, 14 inch block. Oh we no, do. we have some wheel, even bigger even ones. Bigger. We have some even bigger ones. So. Yeah. Um, it basically means that the pieces are all on one die board for yep. you. Yep. 
Yep. Now, a couple of our, our earlier versions of bobs do have two die boards in some versions. So the double wedding ring yep. on the 10 by 10 board, which means it'll fit in the go cutter, mm -hmm. does have two dies. So. Yes, and, then, and that's, that's also so it can be compatible with the go versus the go big electric. So true, which is good to know. True. Um, so yeah, it's that's those are some great. That's a great those question, great though. Questions. Yeah. Another question that we get a lot is about scraps. Okay. Yes. How can I use the AccuQuilt system to bust up my scraps? It is perfect for that. Mm -hmm. Can you see how small these pieces are? These are not big pieces, but they're very easy to sew together. See, I didn't I didn't have any trouble with them. So cool. and. I'm using up scraps and I started some, I've got some I'm gonna show you in a little bit that I've been making with some of my scraps. Mm -hmm. I had a big pile of scraps left over from a wall hanging that I made and I decided maybe I needed to make a table runner or a pillow cover to match because I have all the scraps because otherwise they're gonna go in my scrap jar which is already overflowing. <laughs> That's a whole nother show. We could do a whole show. We could do a whole series of shows on scraps. Oh, you can also do things like cut your pieces into um, common pre-cut sizes. So we've got dies that'll cut your pieces into those common sizes like charm packs, five inch squares. There's a die for that. There sure is. Layer cakes, those are 10 inch squares. There's a die for that as well. Yes. Two and a half inch strips for jelly rolls. Do you think we're hungry? Yeah, <laughs> there's a die for that. So there's dies for all of these things. That's so true. Our good friend Susie over at the Celtic Quilter was telling me the other day that she has just a pile of one inch squares that she cuts up with our dies. Yeah, yeah. And just one inch squares for days. Those are very small pieces. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got our three rows together, and just like any good nine patch, since we have pressed these to the outside, this to the inside, I'm going to nest those seams. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, when you press them to the side, it almost creates like a little ridge, and then they'll fit together. And see how well my dog-eared corners, see, we talk about those dog-eared corners, and how those go together, this is another reason why. And they're the so best. I'm gonna sew this together. Oh, and we have so many answers. Ooh, we've got we've got a vote for organized and coordinated, Miss Bonnie G. Okay, Bonnie G, you can hang out with Lynn Gibney because Lynn Gibney is very she's she's much more uh, controlled. Although she's been working really hard on getting rid of scraps. Mm -hmm. She is making four inch blocks with all of her scraps. That's right, wasn't she showing those off yesterday? She was showing them off yesterday, yeah. They were so pretty. I loved, yeah, the, they just turned out so great. And what a great exercise of just, you know, going through that entire pattern booklet, our, oh, yeah. the, the mix and match cube booklet that we have um, available on our website. And just, you know, going through and just practicing all of the different blocks that there are out there. Okay, now I've just been going willy-nilly and making this block so fast. I should have been talking about it a little bit more. So again, our A piece was our center square, and that's okay. the middle of our nine patch. That's right. Our B pieces are the white, which are the outer, like, blades, sure. almost. And then our C pieces are those inner shapes. They're kind of like a, a chubby little chisel. <laughs> That's so cute. So there it goes together. Now I did go ahead and press this seam open. And I think that's important to note. Yeah. So I am going to go ahead and press these seams open. But I, I like my nesting too much to pass it. <laughs> so we're going to be able to do that again. I'm going to be able to nest that seam. I'm going to be able to go ahead and match up my dog ears. Trot this right over to the sewing machine. Lovely. Do we have questions on the block, Emily, from anybody? <laughs> we are laughing. Do. We also have a really fun comment from Miss Robin. She says, when doing scrappy, I put on some disco music and do the scrappy dance. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was a scrappy dance, but somehow now I'm intrigued and I want to see that, Robin. No, but apparently it goes to disco music. So. Is it anything like the, what was the, the Carlton? Could be. I see it as the Carlton in my head. You know. I think that sounds right. I think we're just gonna dub that the scrappy dance from now on. I love that. 
Thank you for that, for passing that on. <laughs> Thank you so for sweet. that. We're very fond of that visual. Oh gosh, right. Oh, this is a great question. Megan M is wondering, any tips on making a sunset looking quilt with ombre fabric? Oh, well, ombre fabric, that's the, that's the key. That's the key. And then um, you're gonna want to use maybe a design wall. Do you have a design wall? That's gonna be really helpful so that you can be sure you're getting that kind of ombre feel. We've got some patterns that give you that kind of feel and I'm trying to think about names of them. We had one yesterday on the show, the Go Colora eight inch cube Colorado quilt. Oh, That's wow. got kind of that feel to it. You might wanna take a look at that pattern and let that be your guide. Now you could substitute that's like a basic mix and match block in the middle of those units, and you could substitute any of our blocks for that. I almost wonder if the pattern behind you might as well look The pattern well behind really us pretty. would be good for that. You could absolutely use the wacky pattern to be kind of an ombre feel if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, we've got another one that's got strips. That's not as, as sunsetty though. Well, I um, bet, honestly, in Go Quilt, the world is your oyster, right? That's true, too. So if you're not familiar with Go Quilt, it's a free design tool that's on our website. You log into your account, get on there, you can pull up any of our patterns, and you can colorize them however you want. So, so cool. it's not for designing quilts, it's for designing the colors in the quilt. Exactly. So go ahead and try that, and try that with those variegated shades and, and find one that feels right for you? That's a great question. Absolutely, fantastic question. And let's see, ooh, we've got more. Okay, talk, so Leslie yes. is wondering, um, so, talk, so talking about chain piecing, what's the easiest way to tell when you can chain piece? Usually with like repetitive kind mm -hmm. of. If you've got repetitive shapes, that's a really good way to tell. Um, I kind of think of everything as being chain piecing, but yeah. um, if you have got a block, uh, a quilt, if you're doing a project that has several of the same block, mm -hmm. that's a good clue that it's gonna be good for chain piecing. Love that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Do we have any other questions before we jump on to phase Ooh, two? We have a very good one from oh. Tammy L. Okay, Tammy L. So she's got all the cubes, all the angles, all the corners. Can this be made with what she has or is the bob needed? You're gonna need the bob. You are gonna need the bob. It does have some exclusive shapes on it. Great question. Yes. There's your answer. Exactly. Okay, we've used our bob. We've got our, our blocks put together, but when you look at it behind you, it's got sashing and cornerstones, right? It's got fabric between the blocks and it's got those squares. Uh -huh. And you think, okay, well, they probably used a strip die. It's even easier than that. What? Take a look. We used our eight inch cube. No way. Yes, and I had to, I did a double take. So the reason this is so exciting is because usually if you're using strips, you're going to be cutting strips and then you're manually going to be subcutting those down. Or you're going to have to get another die out and use that to subcut them down. Right. This way you're cutting them the exact size that you need. That's Magical, nice. right? That is so nice. So cubes, if you're not familiar with them, A, we have tons of videos on our website, on YouTube channel, on our Facebook page. But basically, the cube is a set of eight dies with eight shapes that are all gonna work together to make over 72 different quilt blocks. And we have seven sizes of cubes, and they're gonna make the finished size block. So if it's a four inch cube, it's gonna make four inch blocks. If it's an eight inch cube like this is, the pieces would be used to make eight inch blocks. Now, you can use them to make other size blocks, but that's, uh, cube 201, not 101. <laughs> so that's, that's the next, that's sophomore level class and we're not gonna go there quite today. So here's our die. So here's our rectangle die and we've got two rectangles on here. So I'm gonna be able to, and I've got two layers. I think I cut two layers. You can cut all your sashing for one block and one pass. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's, this is really fun. This is the square then from also our eight inch cube, the small square. It's got four shapes on the die. 
So I am going to put, I've got three different colors. I've got my blue, my yellow, and my green. And they're not the exact colors because um, I may have not brought all my fabric by mistake with me from home. We're going to put those on there. And you know what? I'm going to cut both of these at the same time because I can, because I've got to go big up here. Go big magic, right? Go big magic. <laughs> so we're going to cut these and take a look at how they go together. Awesome. Ooh, and we've got some fun. Um, how fun is that? Some fun answers too on like scrappy and versus organized. Miss Kirsten um, says that there's room for both. Just depends on the pattern. Stuff doesn't quite work as well scrappy. She says she prefers scrappy, but honestly, only some patterns work that way for her. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's a great point. That's true. So look how fun, how easy that is. So then, and this is again, this is something you can chain piece. If you've got all your, if you make all your blocks first, then you can lay them out and sew your rectangles between them. And then your sashing row down below is actually going to be, again, your rectangles, but with your squares. So let's see, I need a, they're graduated. I need, what do I need? A green one, I think, here. And I know, Joe, it doesn't show up. There's my green, then another one, then here's going to be a blue one. I want to make a pun because they go I this way. Holding myself back. What are you? It's so easy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I knew it before I came, before I even said it. <laughs> she had to go there. Had she to just go had there. to go there. So it's I'm going to sew a couple of these together so you can get a feel for it. It's Wacky Wednesday. Why not? It's Wacky Wednesday. <laughs> What questions have we got while I'm, I'm sewing rectangles? Yes, okay, so let me just check here and see if we have any other questions, because we've got some really, very, very thoughtful ones today as well. Um, okay, let's see. If your thread gets caught in the dies, can you use tweezers instead of a pick? Absolutely. Yeah, totally. And my favorite tweezers are ones that I got um, in the emergency room one time. And someone in my family uh, took the safety off of a hedge trimmer by mistake. Oh. Needed some stitches. And they went to throw these, um, to throw all the pieces out mm -hmm. and said, or do you want them? We just throw them out. And I said, scissors and tweezers? Sure. But they're long and skinny. However, for Christmas, I was gifted the best pair of tweezers I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. um, my son-in-law's great aunt, aunt, great aunt, Lois, lives in Lincoln. She's a quilter. She uh, volunteers at the Quilt Studies Museum, and she uses the tweezers that they sell at the museum and swears by them, and I tell you what, they are the best tweezers I've ever used in really? my whole life. Okay, that's really cool, but you're, you're right. Tweezers come in handy so often when it comes to, I mean, even just with like your sewing machine, if you if you get a thread caught in there. You get a thread caught, you, you get know, a. Sometimes you just gotta get a little surgical up in yeah, there. And, yeah, yeah, oh. surgical. Surgical, exactly. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? Oh, cause, so this is a fun answer from Miss Dawn. Um, so she says that she loves the look of scrappy quilts, okay. uh, but, o but her OCD side makes, the, makes them go organized. You know, and I never <laughs> thought I was like that until I started trying to make scrappy quilts. So there's different kinds of scrappy. That's true. There can be full out, just like go for it scrappy, yeah. or there can be more, mm, how do we say? Control. Like color tones? Yeah, a little bit like, more control. Yes. So like what I was doing. So let me show you. So there we go. We've got, see how that's going to fit together. Oh, look at that. Oh. It's like you can thrive on chaos, but it can also be controlled chaos. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I like that. All right, let me, let me press this last one and lay it down. Then you can get a great idea at how that works. Oh boy. And this is a great example of how you want to look at ways to use your cubes and your bobs together. Mm -hmm. This is just magic to me. Right. Okay. So let me pick up my mess here a little bit <laughs> and I'll show you what I'm, we'll show you some, we'll talk scrappy for a minute. 
So Scrappy can be literally just grabbing everything at hand and seeing how it goes together. Okay. Or Scrappy can be a little bit more controlled. So my Scrappy blocks are that I've been making are a little bit more controlled because the fabric was all from a scrappy yet controlled project. Oh, how pretty are those. Okay, so you can see they all kind of go together, but Wait. they're different. I see what you did there. You kind of married like, a, it's like, yeah, the polka dots are more of like the controlled print, whereas mm -hmm. you have like the, mm -hmm. the kind of wild words. So, so what's kept the them one. and what has kept them kind of consistent mm -hmm. and what keeps the design element going, oh, my light's going out, I'm in the dark, um, <laughs> is having your dark in the center, your your next tone, your medium, a little bit more of a medium tone, yeah. and then your light tone, keeping a light tone on the outside. Yeah, it really does keep that consistency, and it's like, you know, they're all beautiful on them on their own, but right. they're even prettier together because right. of that. Yeah. So you're going to still get the pattern. You're going to still see what you're doing. Now you can do other things with it and color play and all of that, but we're not going to get into that. Now, when I cut these, I have to be really careful. I can't fan fold because remember we're directional right. and everything with these goes around in the same direction. Mm -hmm. So with these, I prep my fabric so that I've got them, I can stack them right sides up. Aren't these just so sweet? Aren't they sweet? I really love them scrappy like this. This is- But they're fun, they're fun. And you know, <laughs> scraps happen. You need to use them, right? <laughs> so you're gonna keep following the pattern for the wacky one. You're gonna add those, um, our squares, the rectangles, you're gonna create the sashing, mm -hmm. follow it. Make sure that you've got your squares going the right, the right but opposite directions, the correct directions, which is opposite. Finish off your top. Once it's complete, then you can layer your batting between the top and the backing. Pin or base those layers together. You can ne you'll never regret putting too many pins or too much basting in a quilt project, but you will regret it if you don't put enough. Okay. And be sh then you can bind it and be sure to share your finished project with us on your social media platforms. That means tag us so that we can see what's going on, right? Absolutely, love to, can't wait to see them. Now, it's almost time to give away a free dye, but do we have questions first, Emily? Well, I think, ooh, um, when do you know to backstitch slash lock your seams? Is our okay. last question of the day. That is a good question. If I am putting together blocks, so if I've got my quilt all, if I got all my blocks done and I am putting together my rows, I will try very hard to remember to back stitch on the outer edges. Okay, perfect. Because there's nothing worse than getting ready to quilt it and seeing that your seams are coming apart. That's true. And then I had one last question for you, but yes. we kind of chatted about it earlier. Is now a good time to bring it up? Certainly. Perfect. Well, we're, you know, looking at the size of that, this Washington's puzzle block and how it's that perfect little adorable four inch. Oh. Are there any other dyes that you would recommend uh, including with this particular? Hold that thought for dye. just a minute. Okay, perfect. Because I made something while you were getting ready. Oh, I show. can't wait. Okay, oh boy. so let's announce, let's start off by announcing our winner of a new die. I would love that. Washington's puzzle. Die. I would absolutely love that. that okay. We were using today. If I could get a drum roll or I'll shake my buttons, please. Shake your buttons, please. Shake my buttons. Charlotte B of Muldrow, Oklahoma. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, Charlotte, this is such a fun die. You're gonna have so much fun. Have scrappy goodness, whether it's controlled or chaos and show us a picture. All right, don't forget, check out AccuQuilt's website for some great deals. Okay, you said, what else could we do? Could we include this with something? And you brought up a specific die, which was our die to try for the month, which is? The canning jar, eight inch finish. Canning jar. Okay, so I did. Now, it's a die to try, and what does that mean? It's only available for this month. Or, be, or while supplies last. Now. I think that this could sell out before the end of the month. So don't, don't get left behind. 
We had such a great show to launch this die, full of inspiration. So let's take a look at the basic. Here's our basic block. I should probably turn this off now that I'm done. It's still hot, very hot. So here's our basic canning jar block. And it's kind of hard to see. I'll show you a better one. But isn't that cute? I love it so much. So and all the inspirational videos and, er, that we've seen. Right? Unbelievable. So then we had, we talked about using it with other fabric, like with food, like strawberry jam. And you can see there's the lid up here. Mm -hmm. Or putting some vinyl, you can't really even see that, but clear vinyl, it looks, it looks funky because of the glare. Um, and then you could put things inside your jar. So much fun. But then we also had one of our experts took and used a cube, the six inch cube, to put the top on it and make a pineapple. This is too much fun. Then she used her six inch cube to put a bottom on it and turn it into a carrot. But Emily's question was, can, uh, can we put a block inside of our jar? And I said, why by golly, we certainly can. Why not? Why not? So here I put a four inch finished Washington's puzzle block inside our canning jar piece. So this is done by, I cut one inch strips. I, it, the next time I do this, I will cut one and a half inch strips and sew on the sides. I cut two and a half inch strips, which was larger than I needed, and put on either side, and then I laid it on the die and cut it. That's just so cute. And then you would just piece it together just like you would the regular canning jar, which is, here's my canning jar. I love that. So we'll put it here so you can see the lid. And there you go. How cute is that? Oh, so much fun. It's adorable. Yay. Get one today. All right. So any other questions? Any other scrappy, we're doing, scrappy happy comments? I think we're doing great. Yeah. I think we're, we're getting about ready to sign off for the day. Well, then I think we should go. <laughs> On behalf of everyone here in the Dream Studio, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for letting me come and hang out with you for a little while. Join. We will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Join Pam and me on Wednesday, January 17th, on January 17th, that's a Tuesday, at noon central time as we relaunch a fan favorite die. Now, Ms. Pam will be back next week just in time to get you ready for Valentine's Day. Be sure to register for all of our live events on AccuQuilt's webpage for a chance to win door prizes.